was October of 2019, and the Penguins were up in Winnipeg. And I was up there covering them. Just club the Jets. Not even an interesting game. And this despite the Penguins having had a bunch of injuries at the time and a bunch of players in turn called up from Wilkes-Barre. One of those was Sam Lafferty, who, if you'll recall, when Sam first came up, he popped a couple of goals and we all got irrationally excited about it. And I went to Sam in the locker room at Bell MTS Place and asked him who it was in the NHL that he might have patterned his game after. Somebody that he'd looked to and said, you know what, if I could be like that guy, I'm going to stick in this league. Sam's not the most talkative guy. And I wasn't expecting some great quote from Sam Lafferty, to put it mildly. But he looked up and said, they tell all of us down there to play like Brian Rust. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins, and it comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Pirates. Everyone should play like Brian Rust. Not just hockey. I'm talking about everything. Everyone should aspire at least to the same career arc that we've been fortunate enough to witness in Pittsburgh with Brian Rust. If anyone did one of those malicious searches through all my social media to try to uncover all my dark tweets from the past or whatever else, they would find that I was not at all an admirer of Rust's work when he showed up in Pittsburgh. I just wasn't. He looked to me, and you want to talk about a swing and a miss here, he looked to me like a selfish player. He wouldn't pass. He had blinders on. Guys were open all around him, including on odd man breaks, and he would still just either try to take it to the net or gun it. And I thought to myself, this was the classic case of someone who had uh, a lot of speed and a lot of drive, but not anywhere near the polish to be able to perform on a consistent level in the NHL. Really, really, really didn't like him. And it it's there somewhere in black and white if anybody really hates me and wants to dredge it up. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is always brought to you by Fubo TV, which costs 65 bucks a month to watch all the same channels, including AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh, that you pay over 200 bucks a month for on your cable bill. Fubo TV comes with DVR, which cable doesn't. Fubo TV doesn't require installation. Fubo TV doesn't have any contracts, any gimmicks. You can cancel any time. And best of all, for listening to this fine program, you get... 15% off your first month by going to FuboTV.com slash DK. One more time, 15% off your first month by going to FuboTV.com slash DK. All he's done since then is to improve at everything. He did become a passer. He did show vision. He did show chemistry with his line mates. And then, and then, he became a goal scorer. And this is not something that you see at the NHL level. I can't tell you how many times I've discussed with hockey executives, evaluators, scouts, on the NHL draft floor that a player either has the touch or he doesn't. There's some in between with some guys, uh, players who have like a really, really good shot but never can really do anything with it. And don't laugh at this, but like a guy like Riley Shan, 
if you even remember him, jumps out in this regard, Shane would just floor people with what he could do in practice. But it almost never translated into the game. You either have this or you don't. The most pristine current example on the Penguins roster of someone who's born with it, and not just because his dad played in the NHL, is Kasperi Kapanen. Kapanen does terrible things to goaltenders. He hits shots that other people shouldn't even be attempting. And that's usually what it looks like. Because Kapanen has always been able to do that. He did that coming up through the ranks in Finland. Uh, He did that, heck, when he was a child following Sammy, his dad, around the league here in North America. I don't know if it's natural, if it's God-given, whatever other terminology you want to come up with for it, but it does not develop in the NHL, meaning upon arrival. Brian Rust was not this scorer at Notre Dame. Brian Rust was not this scorer in Wilkes-Barre. He achieved it through surreal hard work and dedication and studying and learning and little moves, the stuff that he'll tell me off the, off the record, like, you know, not, not to go running because he doesn't want to, like, in the moment, like he's bragging about a certain thing that he did on the rink. But he'll say, hey, you know, that little thing that, uh, you know, I, I did on the power play, that's something that I've been working on. And it's not even a shot or a pass. It might just be the way he received a puck. That's how advanced he's become. When I asked him the other night about waiting out Sidney Crosby's uh, half-the-rink-length bank pass, how he purposely let it go so that he could pick up the bank at the other end. This is a player who's just, he's self-made. He's a self-made NHL star as much as anyone I've covered. And I've said that about other players in the past. Pascal Dupuis comes to mind. You know, Duper was supposed to be a a fourth-line grinder for life, and he turned himself into a a first-liner alongside Sidney Crosby, who at the height of his career was popping quite a few goals. Rust's way past that, with all due respect to Duper. Rust is way past that. If you think about the goals that he got over the weekend in Washington, the first two goals uh, of the Penguins' 3-0 victory in D.C. that put them into first place. Both were unassisted. Both were just his legs churning to blow past people, to create offense. To be honest with you, kind of the way he did back when I didn't like his game. The difference is he went in and finished beautifully. Both times had an opening underneath the glove on the first one, carried all the way around on the second one for a beautiful uh, backhand forehand sequence. Self-made NHL star. 22 goals now in a shortened season. This is a legit 30-goal scorer who does not leech off Crosby or Jake Gensel or anyone else around him, who has earned his way onto the first line, who has earned his way onto power play one, who has earned his way into being maybe, I mean, it's silly to call him the most respected player in the organization when you have Sidney Crosby and other guys in there. So... I'll go back to what Sam said and why he said it. Yes, of course, Sidney Crosby is the role model on and off the ice. Sid is Sid. But the reason that the instructors and the coaches at all levels of the organization really do cite Brian Rust as the model is because most humans are not born with those gifts that people like Sid and Kapanen have. They know that these things 
require commitment, dedication, hard work. Teddy Bluger, by the way, is another one in this mold. They know that. So instead of showing them Sid and saying, gee whiz, what did you do wrong when you were born that you can't be like that? Instead, they're saying, look over there, watch 17. He was you a few years ago and look at him now. That's why, that's why. When we come back, just one question. Back, it's time for just one question. That's brought to you on this program always by the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they are committed to providing food for our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. Go to pittsburghfoodbank.org to find out how one dollar is all it takes to produce and deliver five full meals. One dollar, five meals. Pittsburghfoodbank.org. And today's question comes from Sid who asks, more impressive, shut out, one nothing over Bruins or 3 nothing over Capitals? Well, uh, this one feels to me like it's a little too easy, but I- I'll go along with you here. I-, I thought that the complete performance the Penguins put forth in blanking Boston was hard to beat by almost any performance that they had all season. The Penguins were uh, both disciplined and dynamic at both ends of that game. And the Bruins had, you know, their whole team. I know nobody ever likes to talk about the other team's injured players, but, you know, the Capitals are out there without Alexander Ovechkin, and as a result, their power play looked just lost. And I think that's kind of understandable. You know, you've built a power play for a decade and a half around one concept above all. Get it to the guy above the left dot. And then he's not there. And he's usually there. This is a pretty durable guy. And then John Carlson was missing. And John Carlson's a guy who's perennially in the conversation for the Norris Trophy. I thought Washington's best player over the weekend was Connor Sherry. So I, I, I that's not a knock on, on him. It's just that uh, I don't know that that's the Capitals' best. Whereas I felt the Bruins in the game that you're describing uh, that took place here in Pittsburgh, I thought they, they brought it. That was, to me, the most impressive thing about that game was that the Bruins, I thought, were every bit as good as Pittsburgh. And, of course, they ended up proving that a couple of nights later when they leapfrogged them in that regard. If the Penguins can play the way they did in that one nothing game against Boston, I said it then and I'll say it again, there's nothing that they can't do in the playoffs. But how? How do you sustain that? How do you make it basically uh, part of who you are to defend that heart? How do you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? How do you adjust to the return of Evgeny Malkin? Or does Evgeny Malkin's return adjust to you, I guess would be a fairer way of stating that. Uh, All of these things are, are real issues, and my issue with all of this and my greatest single concern for the Penguins heading into the playoffs is that there really isn't time. I'd love to see what this group looks like with everybody going, but not just for a day or two, not just for a practice the day before game one, which is the way some of this is lining up. And now You know, other players have been going down now that some are coming back. You'd love to see this team really get on some kind of, you know, role that's beyond the scores, that's beyond the results. 
and you'd love even more to see what that looks like with Malkin centering the second line. Can't, though. You can't. This is the schedule. This is the schedule. And whatever it is that the Penguins achieve in the first round of the playoffs is going to be determined a ton based on how they handle these next few days and what kind of good fortune they might or might not have as it relates to health. Although, my goodness, after all this, you'd think they would have earned a little bit of a break in that capacity. Thanks so much uh, for the question, Sid. Thanks to everybody for listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one tomorrow. Point Park University, in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, they understand there's no substitute for real-world experience and career-building connections. Their innovative curriculum engages students with distinctive experiential learning opportunities. Point Park's pioneering co-op program empowers qualified students to work in full-time, paid positions with their corporate partners while earning college credits. Visit pointpark.edu slash works to learn more. Career ready. That's the point. Point Park University. Your front door, your car, your gym locker, your gun. Safety is a habit. Learn more about how to keep guns safe and secure. Visit projectchildsafe.org.